All right, guys, welcome back to part two of how not to install metal siding on a garage, outbuilding house, I don't care where you're putting it, where we go out onto a project with Frankie who's been installing metal siding for 30 plus years and he's going to share with us all his tips, tricks, inside knowledge, and more importantly, things to avoid, what to watch out for when you go to install your own siding. So without wasting any more time, let's get into this next part of this two-part series. Okay, so this is the first sheet on this run and it's gotta be level. Okay, so what do you wanna do? Uh, right there. Right there? Yeah, right there. At the level? Yep. So we're using these to guide, to put our level up against them. Does that look pretty good to you, Frankie? Yep. Let me show these guys. So that's how we get, once we get the first sheet level, then that lines everything else up. Right, Frankie? Yep. Okay. Okay. What we're gonna do, I gotta get a nice bit here. So how did you, how did you cut the angle pieces on it, Frankie? Uh, Anything I, special? My roof is four, four, uh, 412 pits, so I just put a 412 field on there, which I just used a speed square, which is behind you. You wanna show us how you do that? Yep. Ah, uh, okay, yep. So we're gonna learn how to cut them angles so that you're not doing tons of measuring over and over every time. Okay, so. If, if you know your pitch or your hole, or your, your, your rope, well. Which this one's 412. Yep. So you, you hit the corner of your of your tin, then I bring my square down to the common. Go to 412, boom. Where does, where does the 12, where do you see the 12 at? Well, that's just, that's what it's called. See, here's your pivot point. Yep. So um, I just say say 12, you know, I mean, that's okay. my corner. Then I go to the four off my common. Oh, okay, so if your rip was a 312. Yep, I'd go back. Go to there. Yep, because these, these these numbers up, up here are for, for your hips and valleys. So that has nothing to do with it. Okay, so, so an we just eight, stay in eight, the 12 common. pitch would be yep. right there, and that's where you'd mark it? And then, yep, you'd... then mark it. I, I usually mark the first two and then put the level on it. Okay. So, after I get to my marks. All right, so that's how you use a speed square. Yep, very handy tool to have. Well, when you understand how to actually use it. Yeah, you know, we should, I'm wondering. All right, you guys. Common tools like a speed square, I don't use these in my work, but that doesn't mean occasionally I don't have to know how to use them. And so I learn how to use it and then I forget it, to be totally honest with you. I'm wondering, would you guys be interested in seeing like a series of videos where we actually go through some common tools that maybe like speed squares or have, you know, some kind of, uh, I don't know, what do you, what would you call it, Frankie? Like a level of basic knowledge or whatever with them to how to use them. The when right you buy way. them though, if you buy, if you buy a good one, I mean, if you like a Swanson or whatever, they'll come with directions. Yep. It actually does. A Swanson does. Yeah. But people would rather watch. Oh yeah. It's easier to learn by to, watching it. Yeah. Then. Yeah. So you guys tell me, would you want Frank and I to go through and go, hey, here's how you use a speed square. Here's what the hips and valleys. There's even certain little reasons why them notches are in here. So he's pointing out these notches right I mean, here. There's reasons for pretty much everything on here. Yeah. Right. And they and I use them notches yeah. all the time, all the time. And I look at them going, this looks like, like a foreign language to me. <laughs> but that's why you see Frankie doing this stuff and he's not running in skid loaders because he gets in the cab of a skid loader and what do you I say? I can't run it. Yeah, he don't like them. He don't like them, period. <laughs> that's the fun stuff. So we're going to watch how Frankie cuts this. Are you using a left, right-handed, or center cut tin snips? Straight snip? cut. Straight cut tin snips? Yeah. Okay. Would you recommend a left or right in this situation like this? No, but when you do it, I cut no corner. When we put the corners in, then then you gotta use the left and right. Okay. Now I notice you're not wearing gloves, Frankie. Is that because you have like 
skin that's like a bear skin or? No, I just I can't hang on to the tin otherwise. Cause this stuff will cut your skin, you guys. Oh yeah. She is sharp. Right, we'll see if Frankie cut this one right. So how do you trim out doors and windows, Frankie? I cut them extra long right here. Now I'm probably, what, maybe an inch here, inch, whatever. And then now I'll come in and get my exact cutting. I'll know exactly what I need from the bottom to the top. Okay. Okay, then I'll, I'll cut it again. But then I just slip this in behind. And sign, when, it, when after I got it cut, what is then that? I can do everything at one time. I can screw this, the, the metal. J channel and secure it to the building is all that J time. Chan is that that's not J channel? This is J channel. Oh, uh, okay. I was gonna say that looks just like normal J channel. Yep, yep that's all this is. So that's then all you use good. around the windows and doors. Yep, this. But now also I'm gonna I'm gonna make it completely maintenance free. I go like this. Okay. On the outside, you might want to be on the outside on this one. Okay. See, I'll wrap the doors with this. Okay, then your inside will be red. See, there won't be no brick molding because normally you, you butt up to that brick molding. Well, then you got to paint it every three years or whatever, you know, when the paint chips off. And yeah. Well, there'll be no, there'll be no brick molding here. There'll be this. What you know, is this, that? What is that channel called? will be here holding the tin. You know. Oh, so then your J channel goes on top of that. Yep. What is that called, Frankie? It's just a, it's just a bent uh, three by, I think it's three by uh, inch and a half band, 90. Okay. That's, yeah, that's all it is. You know, three by inch half ninety. Because then, when it comes time to, then when it's all said and done, completely done. Where are they? My uh, oh, they're over here. I'll grab them. And these, obviously, we got to paint, but they're they're vinyl, so there's there'd be there'd be no rotting. What is it? That's, that's what seals your door tight to your, your to the rest of your, you know, your building and your door's tight. No air leak. Where does it go? Um, anything in the way? Okay. I'm going to shut the door. That way I can show you what this goes. Well, air, air can actually, wind can actually go in there, you know what I'm saying? Okay. So then this piece here, let's see. goes on just like this. Tight against this, this only will go against the red, but also, into the door, and there's your seal. Door's tight, uh, weather tight, wind tight, whatever you want to call it. And it's still maintenance free because this is vinyl. Okay, it's just a different color. They well, I, got, I bought the red paint. I bought the actual matching color to, for the tin. So I'm gonna paint them red. Okay, or we could leave them white. I paint them red. Okay. I would. Okay. So guys can paint them red, whatever I mean, color they know, want. Yeah. But, they, but they don't I, come in the matching color? I suppose that you special ordered them. I didn't, didn't special I'm just order. saying it for these guys. So if they're... I'm not sure. You'd have to okay, yeah. I don't, I don't... And what do you... Weather sealing, right? Yep. The weather stripping? Garage door weather, weather seal. Garage door weather stripping or weather yep. sealing. Okay, so Frankie's got, he's string lined off all of his screw holes. So, screw holes, screw heads. 
So you can see how he's, that way he's got a straight line run on all of them. Right through here. One of the things to watch out for is you can see where you get a good nice tight seal and where you don't. This is a don't, this is a do. Same well, thing. It. It's a fixable deal. It's a fixable deal, but you can see where it's tight. So you can see right here where the panel isn't tight, but it's still fixable. It can still be shifted over ever so slightly and tightened up. So it's not too late to correct it. All right, you guys. Well, Frankie's getting this one all buttoned up. He's got the seals on the doors. He's got, let's show you some of the detail work that we've done here. We've got a little ways to go, but you can see how he'd use J channel to trim out all his doors. Then he's got the seal going all the way around. Okay, I'm gonna hit that button, Frank. Can you hold the camera? Yeah, I can hit the button for you. Okay, I just wanna show these guys how this works so they can get an idea. Now I'm gonna pause the video right here because I want you to look at this garage door and you can see that the garage door runs parallel to the ground. We ran the siding vertically up and down because when you look at this garage door, you'll see all the dirt that gets accumulated when you run the siding sideways. And that's exactly why we decided to run it straight up and down is to avoid that dirt accumulation. We, did, we, we mentioned that in the first video, but we didn't say it in this video and it was important enough that I wanted to bring it back so you guys knew about it. Building looks so good, we gotta pressure wash the door now to make, no, it, make the rest of it look decent. Door, you have to do, throw some WD-40 on there. Yep. Just watch it. There you go. You can see how nice and tight that is. That's just sealed. Looks good. This is how he's trimmed out the doors. Right here, just using J-channel. Cut it out so that we can get that in nice and tight. I mean, it looks, looks good. Yeah. That I mean, there's nothing else to add, is there, Frankie? No, I mean... I think we covered a lot of... I think you, you covered a lot of ground. Corners! I forgot there to show you, you corners. So here's the corner pieces. They're big. They're a lot bigger than your J-channel or your other pieces. And this is what encapsulates the corners. Hey, Frankie, can you show us how a corner works? These are going just like this. This side will be easy, obviously. You know, this will be just straight cut, put up there. But I gotta cut it down and get this angle put on this one, the 412. Okay. And then cut across. And then how do you, how do you... Uh, Screws, just screw it. Yeah, but is there a certain screw pattern or anything well, we need well, to know? Well, you stay with, your, stay with your lines on your building. Okay, so you stay with the lines that you've already established yeah, so around, yeah. but we don't have to worry there isn't a top and a bottom nope. to this, Frankie? Nope. Well, you'll make it a top and bottom once you cut that 412 on there. But inherently, there isn't a top and a bottom because nope. you I don't have ribs. I cut that 412 quick enough and, and put it out there for you. Just All right. You. Yeah. Let's let's see let's see you do it. Well, we still yeah. got to make a video on how to use a speed square. I hey, know. if it's not raining, let's do it in the morning. All right. So Frankie's going to mock up the cuts that he's making. So he's got his 412 pitch on the top side right there. Then he measured his drop down. So what he's measuring right now is this drop down right there. Which is four and a half. Four and a half. And we'll just see how close we come. Now you guys be super careful cutting metal like this and handling it. Frankie's basically got bare paws, so his hands don't get cut up as bad as normal people's hands. <laughs> but 
it's easy to get cut on these things. I mean, Frank, I think your entire hand is a callus. They're sore. They're sore? Yeah. Oh, here, let me hold this. Yeah, I'm going to use the grinder. Yeah, you use them right down to nothing. That's Frankie's wheel. There's actually a lot left for Frankie. <laughs> I won't throw it away yet. <laughs> no. You won't. All right, so let's see how how tight we got it. Oh yeah, yeah, that's it. Pretty and much. so that's the cut that he would use on a full piece. Yeah, because he wouldn't overlap two pieces. So no, wouldn't, no, you wouldn't I mean, use a small piece in the corner. He's just demonstrating the cut. Yeah. So, so basically, that's it. That's what she looks like. And then you how... tuck everything underneath the J channel. Like so. In fact, I might have to take out a little bit because of this. See this little indent sticking out here? So I might have to cut that to get a square in there. Okay. But it looks like it's going down pretty square, square though with the ribbing. But that's it. I mean, that ain't really that bad. Nope. And that's it for us. That's all we got. Now we hope this video's helped you out. God bless. Go get them. Thank you, Frankie. Yep. Thanks all of you guys for sticking around, for watching all of this video. Let me know what you think of it in the comments down below. What else you'd like to see? Frankie and I got a massive project coming up. Holy crap. Do we got a big one coming up? We're going to be attempting to put a second story onto that entire building down there and changing the entire roof line as well. So Frankie's gonna be up here a lot more than he's gonna be back down home with, uh, with us in the cities. So stay tuned for that one. And that's all we got. Hit the subscribe button, hit the bell notification is what I've learned. YouTube does not notify you if I've uploaded a video if you don't hit that little bell notification. So do me a favor, hit that bell notification and watch my videos, so much appreciate it. And do me one last favor, check out the video here and here. God bless. Go get him, you guys. And the dog thinks she's going for a run. <laughs>